Hi everyone, I'm Steve from the Total War community team and I'm once again sitting down with some of the guys from the Warhammer development team uh, to chat a little bit more about what's coming up in the future. Just a quick disclaimer, this video is being recorded before the release of patch 5.2 uh, so even though we'll be talking about those patches and the, the kind of future of those patches we won't be addressing any of your feedback or responses to that from now as we wouldn't have seen that because unfortunately we can't see into the future as much as we wish we could. So with that said, Let's jump into some introductions. Uh, Rich and Sean, people have met you before, but uh, do you want to give us a quick introduction as to who you are and what you do? I'm the game director for the Total War Warhammer series. I look after the various DLCs, hotfixes, patches and the like with these fine gentlemen. And Sean, how about you? Yeah, I'm the lead designer on the next project coming up now. Uh, so I'm focused primarily on you know keeping the team focused and uh, bringing it together ready for the end of this year. Awesome. And uh, we also uh, have Mitch with us today. Uh, who's heading up the project to bring the kind of smaller updates and uh, and refreshes to the game in the interim patches in between the DLCs, like 5.2, which you would have just got your hands on. Mitch, do you want to give us a quick introduction to who you are, what you do, and, and also maybe your history with the, the Warhammer series? Yeah, sure. So I'm Mitch. Um, some people will remember me. Um, thinking way back to Beastmen um, is where I joined the project. Um, and Warhammer were rich in the team. And I worked on every DLC, all the way up to Immortal Empires, um, some of the big notes in there were Tomb Kings and Vampire Coast. A couple of the ones that I led, some of my favorites. I then took a small hiatus after Immortal Empires, uh, but now I'm back. And like you said, I'm going to be working on the patches and the updates um, and just really having to think how we can um, bring all of the old content a bit more up to date. Awesome. Thanks, Mitch, and welcome back. Thank you. So let's jump into a couple of questions about the next DLC. Mm -hmm. um, so in the last video, we spoke a bit about the new Legendary Lords that were coming, uh, gave some little bits of juicy information there. Is there any update on how things are going? Yeah, things are going really well. Uh, we are way, way, way into our production pipeline now. So you would have seen from the last video some of the creatures and characters come into life with some of the animations. And we're also now working on lots of our audio content as well, so how, how these things are going to sound. Uh, how we're developing our designs, which I'm sure Sean will talk a little bit about later. Um, as we push forward in uh, rounding out, you know, the development process where we're going to iterate and then uh, fit, do some bug fixing and the like before we get to release. So looking really good. Sean, how, how are things going from your end? What, what are you doing at the moment? Well, we're actually almost at like a playtesting stage now. So we've got it all together. It's it's. It's a, it's a beautiful masterpiece that is <laughs> filled with problems. So, so we will play test it, we'll iron out those kinks and uh, we'll fix all the bugs. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're just shifting into that phase now, which is for us the most important phase. Uh, so we'll be really relying on our QA team to give us lots of feedback and we'll spend a lot of time play testing it ourselves. But uh, as we shift into iteration, what you know looks like an amazing idea right now, we'll play it and go like, oh, actually maybe we could shift it this way or that way. And that's where like the, the real magic comes together. Uh, and that's what we've learned over the years that this is like the most crucial stage to get like the, the best mm -hmm. product. So uh, we are there now and we are not you know wasting any time with what we have. So you, uh, a word that you guys both mentioned there is iteration. Mm. And for those who don't know what that is, what, what is that and what is that stage when, when you're in game development? So we, we have like a few key stages for us. So we have the pre-production stage, which is where we decide what we're making. We've you know, figured out who the characters are, what's their goal, what's the, the pillars to, to lean towards. After pre-production, we know what we're making. We shift into production where we start producing it. We, mm -hmm. we, make, we make it. Uh, and during that stage, we, we just kind of have like the first draft. So once it all comes together, we then play test that and we go, okay, so what was good? What was bad? What, you know, maybe, maybe it's like completely the wrong direction. We think we've, we've missed the mark. As we hit into iteration, that's where we, you know, we take a, a stop, we address it, we think, okay, we need to turn left here or go right there, and then we, we have, you know, a good few weeks of doing that, and then we, at the end of that, we then shift towards bug fixing so that we can polish the product ready for release. Right. Yeah, it's definitely where we sprinkle the little bit of pixie dust and yeah. magic into it, and you know, just really polish it out. So let's look at these new legendary lords. Let's let's look at Gorbad for the first one. Is there any extra stuff based, you know, what you told us before? Um, any new stuff that you can talk about today uh, regarding his his playstyle mechanics? Anything about him? Yeah, you can go a little bit more detail. So last time we talked about how he was, you know, this this tactician that brings all uh, flavors of the orcs and goblins roster together, uh, and we've dug into that a bit further, and we've come up with a uh, name in progress, but apt de plan, um, <laughs> which is a, a feature around 
uh, Gorbard experimenting with what different units in the roster can he pull together and if those form a plan in his head he can then create a unique strategy around them so it might be uh, you know oh send out some goblins in front of the archers and they can pick up the arrows and it's like well now you've got a way to regenerate your ammunition during the battle because he's got arrow catchers go in and get it uh, or you know or maybe it's a more campaign focused thing of like oh well, what if I bring loads of wolf riders then I can do better raiding so it's all ideas around experiment with your army what units you bring and that can have both campaign and battle and, uh, interactions to make him uh, quite quite different so you have mentioned units are there any that you can tell us about today yeah I, th I think the the unit I most want to talk about is the uh, or the, the characters the savage orc shaman so to go back to you know how we're always looking at the game and yeah. trying to find where it makes sense uh, for us we thought we have was our game, game right now. Well, you know, we've got lots of Savage Orc tribes in game, but none of them are being actually led by Savage Orcs, which they should be. So if we bring in the Savage Orc Shaman, well, we can we can write that wrong and we can we can bring in a new bit of gameplay, but also refresh some old experiences and make it feel a bit more authentic to the Warhammer world. You know, it's weird having a Savage Orc tribe led by an orc. <laughs> yeah. Now it's a Savage Orc, so yeah, that's the goal. Yeah, we want to give you that flavour. Yeah. Um we had that in the past with Shadows of Change and didn't quite get that right there with Mother Stankia. So, yeah, absolutely want to make sure that you can role play out the armies that you want to build. And yeah, Sean, Sean was like dead set on getting this this character in, <laughs> in, in for you. Yeah, when we brought in the Savage Orc, it did make us take another look at Wurzak. They're like, well, if we're giving him <laughs> another character, maybe we should take a look at what he's up to. So we've actually moved him as well. So we've moved him from the Badlands down to the Southland jungles okay. uh, to pay homage to his origin in his uh, eighth edition lore. Uh, and we've, we're working like a, a little nod to his connection with uh, Gork and Mork and the Savage Orc tribe. So, yeah, a, a new fresh experience there. Something we're looking to do in other places as well. Awesome. Yeah. So, so we want to see your best words egg dance. <laughs> the, time will, the time will yeah. come. I'm sure. I'm sure. If there's enough demand for it. <laughs> so, what, what about Goldfag? What's coming down that line with the, the Ogre Kingdoms? Is there more stuff that you can tell us about now? Yeah, I can tell you some more stuff about that. You're really you're pulling it all out. I'm going to be yeah. I'm yeah. very heavily yeah. aiming at you today, Sean. Oh, I'm in the crosshairs. Yes, yeah, yeah. because you're heading this all up. You know, you've got all the juicy yeah. details. Yeah, I'll make sure I do a good <laughs> job. Uh, so, yeah, so Goldfag, I mentioned earlier, he is the mercenary guy. So, well, we have to make him a mercenary, right? Like, we have to create the first proper mercenary faction in Warhammer 3. Uh, so, we've got a brand new feature set now where you can take on Goldfag's contracts uh, and you actually work for another faction. So... If I create a scenario here, uh, Oops, sorry, we obviously had to deliver a mercenary experience. So, for the first time in Warhammer 3, we're, we're trying to create a faction that plays like a mercenary. So you will work for other factions. So, in his new feature, Gold Fags Contracts, um, you can, let's say, Carl Franz is having some trouble with Vlad, and he offers you a job. You can take on all his wars and go, okay, I'll work for you, Carl. If you beat up Vlad and maybe Dreit just causing trouble or Kemler as well, if you do enough good job for him and beat up his enemies, maybe gift some of the settlements to him, you can fulfill your contract and Carl will uh, give you a nice big juicy payday at the end of that. So, yeah, and we've even tried to keep it like, you're a neutral party, you're just a mercenary. So a lot of the, uh, the diplomacy that comes with mm. beating up Vlad will actually get passed on to Carl. Like, you know, he's the one that hired you. It's not Goldfag's fault that he's doing a good job. So at the end of that contract, maybe Vlad says could you work for me instead and take on Carl next? So we've created this new experience where he does kind of roam the world, taking on the jobs and beating up anyone he fancies. Interesting. Yeah. I'm going to throw another one at you, Ooh. Sean. I, d I don't know if you can guess what I'm going to ask you. <laughs> hmm. Do you want some more content? Do you want Maybe a crawl of content? Yeah. Maybe a little bit. Are we going to do this again? We're going to Just do it again. A little, little <laughs> tiny bit of content <laughs> yeah. about Corn and Skulltaker. Yeah? Sure. No, that's enough. You Oh, okay. Well, I, I, thought you, I thought you were going to ask about another ogre co piece of content, which I could um, say, well, we're doing the yetis, but I guess we'll go straight into the skull taker if you want. Sorry, what? Yetis? <laughs> yeah, the yetis, but we'll move on from that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, tell us, uh, you can cut that. Um, <laughs> tell us a bit about yetis. Uh, the yetis are uh, like a monstrous infantry unit for the ogre roster. They are like quite ice imbued and come from the, the, the deep recesses of the mountains in the Ogre Kingdoms and uh, to give them a bit of a difference from Gorges who are quite you know aggressive charging in the, the Yetis actually come with like a passive debuff a bit, uh, an aura of frost I think is our uh, working title there 
So you want to mix them into your roster in places to debuff the enemy so that your ogre balls can really hit them hard on the charge. Are they really big or just big? Just big. Just big, okay. Just one. Yeah, big. Yeah. Furry. Yeah. 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 As a yeti should be. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Are they soft and fluffy? <laughs> I wouldn't pet them. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, let's have a look at corn. Mm-hmm. Uh, Skulltaker. Yes. What new info can you give us? Well, I think last time I told you that he was he's a he's a champion hunter. You know, that's his probably gameplay role though. So again, we've dialed into that on the campaign side as well. With Skulltaker, he's all about hunting down champions, taking champions, taking their skulls. Uh, and for us, we are trying to capture that with uh, him. When he defeats characters in campaign, he will claim a portion of their strength, some of their champion essence which he can then use to imbue his cloak of skulls. And the whole idea of the feature is seek out you know, powerful characters, defeat them, claim some of their strength, and empower yourself even further so that you can become the ultimate corn champion and the ultimate champion of the Warhammer world. So it's literally a process of the more people you kill, the stronger you are. Yeah, and if anyone starts to look pretty tough, well, you just kill them, right? And then yeah. you take their strength, yeah. and now you're and even then you're tougher. tougher. Exactly. And it's just exponential until you're, yeah. you're champion of... Everything. Yeah, until he's stopped, stood at the top of the peak alone. Yeah, he's got, he's got skulls everywhere. I was looking at the art the other day, um, what the, our character artists have done, and even his sword on the blade, there are skulls etched all the way up there. The, the, the guy is fully stocked. That's awesome. Yeah, it's very cool. Units. Are, are there any new units or anything like that you can talk about for corn for this DLC? Yeah, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about what we've got coming for them. Um, and I guess touching back on one of the, the other questions that you asked about how we produce and package up the content, corn has got something slightly different, not too different, but slightly different in that we, we've been looking back in all the books and uh, you know the materials that, that, that were set by Games Workshop. And what we're trying to do, obviously, is create parity across all three different strands of the DLC, you know, where you've got your legendary lord and legendary hero and so on. But with corn, when we came to look at what other options were available for some of the generic characters, um, they didn't quite have as much stuff on offer now as uh, maybe what some of the other factions do, as we've been you know, exhausting it through the various different DLCs and, and products. Um, so Korn's already got, uh, I think, three, three kind of uh, heroes in already, like the cult cultists and the like. So there was nothing really more to be added there. We do have an, a new gen generic lord though coming in, which I'm sure we'll talk about in the future. But to fill that gap, what we're doing with corn is going to give you two legendary heroes rather than just the one that you okay. see in past experiences. Um, so green skins and ogres, don't worry, they still fit the same form as Thrones Decay, but corn, you're going to get two legendary heroes. And they've got two pretty cool ones, uh, or I think they are. Um, so first up, we've got uh, Skylar Anthogrim, which I think is one that you've all been talking about and expecting to see. Um, we do have that brute of a Chaos Spawn making his appearance with his massive, you know, ape-like uh, stature and, 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 and fists. Um, he was a past Norsecan chieftain, wasn't he? Mm, that's right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so he's got all this pent-up rage and, and fury he just wants to unleash it all. And then the other character, which maybe you're not expecting, but we're equally excited about doing, is Scar Bloodwrath. Now, Scar Bloodwrath is not an 8th edition character per se. He comes from the end times. So uh, it made sense when we looked at Korn, how we can get the best and uh, you know, most exciting characters and units in, into the pack and to have, to have him. Um, and it will make sense when we disclose some more of the content coming as well, why we, we chose him. But I think both of those, very brutal, very vicious, yeah, very much strong followers of Korn. So they'll be fun, fun to play around with. You mentioned a lot about um, kind of reference materials and things like that, that you've got like the books and stuff from, from Games Workshop. So what, what do you use as your reference point? Well, Mitch is really good, you know, one for digging through and turning over every stone and yeah. an idea. No, absolutely, yeah. The, I think the start of every project is, you know, for me and I'm sure many others, just taking the army book of whatever you're working on and just reading through it. Um, and then you pull out from, from the army books, yeah, loads of notes related to, you know, the characters, the units, um, and especially the campaign as well. Um, you're always kind of looking for something unique, something interesting that you can pull out from the army book that you can then translate into gameplay. Obviously, it's a little bit more directly translatable with the battle stuff, but in campaign, you're always looking for something just a little bit, you know, unique, something that you can really, and it can be like something really small sometimes, and um, you can just kind of latch onto 
um, and turn it maybe into something something quite interesting for a feature or something like that. Um, so yeah, you're always reading through the army books. And there's also lots of other books as well and other magazines and various source material that yeah you'll just read through throughout the entire project to, to try and just really immerse yourself in, in whatever it is you're working on at the time. So is there like a secret library somewhere in the studio that I've not been to? <laughs> where kind all of this material yeah. is no, just like this treasure trove. No, there's not a secret oh, library. Right, yeah, no, oh, not, really? No. Oh, okay. What's you just take it home, store? don't you, Sean? You take it home. <laughs> it's got my flat, yeah. <laughs> Um, awesome, cool, thanks Mitch. Well, we've spoken quite a lot about the DLC now mm -hmm. and looking forward to sharing more info in the near future. Let's have a chat with you now, Mitch, and talk about what you've been doing with the, the smaller updates and the kind of interim patches and things like that, like 5.2 that we've just seen released. What's your approach to this? So how do you, how do you identify what you're gonna work on or what you wanna add or what you wanna refresh and, and, and freshen up? Yeah, so I think, as players know, um, there is a lot that we wanna freshen up in the game. And we do do quite a bit of that uh, in the DLCs, but I think what we want to start doing more of is is taking the opportunity to do that with the patches. So that's kind of the initiative we're starting now to to kind of make our patches a bit bigger, a bit fuller. And in terms of what goes into them, um, we really want to be player led. Um, so yeah, 5.2 obviously came with a couple of things. It came with some new things, and it came with some um, some fixes. And that's something I think we want to keep um, going forward. So we always want to try and add something new in the patches something you know that you can say, hey, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna try that new thing out. Um, and you don't necessarily have to wait for a DLC to have like a new experience. So that's always something I think we're gonna try and aim for. And then yeah, the, on the point of tackling, you know, fixing up some old content, um, there's a lot of it, obviously. We've got, uh, you know, a massive amount of content now. So yeah, we are gonna be listening to players a lot. Um, we've got, you know, a great team here that takes all of the feedback from the community um, and then feeds it to the, de the devs like us. Uh, we'll kind of filter through that. We won't necessarily always have the capability to do you know, exactly what people are asking for. So for example, if people want to do, um, want us to do things like add new lords um, in these updates, that's probably not going to be something we're going to be able to do. And we'll focus maybe a little bit more um, on things like you know, campaign features, um, fixing up old features, doing some reworks, maybe smaller reworks. Maybe for some of the patches, we'll do bigger reworks, maybe like a race rework if we can. There's gonna be quite a bit of variance in these patches in terms of both the scope of them, um, how big they are, and the kind of content we do in them. Um, and yeah, again, we're gonna be player-led. Just because we're not gonna do in these updates new lords and, and characters, um, that doesn't mean that for old content, there aren't gonna be any new lords or characters. Talking about these things that you're you're reworking and working on. Are you able to tell us anything about what's going to be coming next down the line in the next patch? So that's a good question. As you noted at the start, we we're recording this before 5.2 comes out. So probably what's going to be happening right now um, in our time, <laughs> not in the viewers' in the time, past. in the past, <laughs> yeah. Uh, is yeah, we're going to be waiting to see the reception of 5.2. What would be really awesome um, is to start getting more feedback from players. Um, what is it do they want to see? What content do they want us to go back and fix and update and if they have even kind of like i said we want to do new stuff so if they've got idea for you know new new little features that they want to see in the game um it can be you know quality of life features or it can be something a little bit more mechanical like the deeps then we can look to do that so at the moment i will mention a couple of things that are on our list um but the big caveat obviously is that plans might change so what we're thinking of doing at some point will be a bretonia rework um i think you know, we, we have looked at them in the past, um, but they've, they've still got quite a few things that I think we wanna, we wanna fix and, and update with them. Most notably, I mean, Rich always talk about this quite a lot, is the Green Knight. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he's, um, he's on our list for sure, along with some other, some other feature fixes for Bretonia. So they'll be coming, I think, at some point. Also Kislev, I'll mention them. Um, we've seen a lot of feedback. Um, that people want us to take a look at, Kis look at Kislev um, and kind of you know, update them a little bit. And then we also got some other smaller plans. Um, so I think we've got a big uh, rebalance of the ancillary system and a bunch of new ancillaries that we're looking to do um, in the near future. Um, the chaos invasion, that's also something mm -hmm. that we've seen a lot of requests for, um, which is definitely on our list um, to kind of bring back in some form. Um, obviously it's a little bit different now how we can kind of implement it in Warhammer 3 because all the, the big bad guys are already on the map. <laughs> but um, I think there's there's some some ideas we've got there. So yeah, that's a couple of things just to name, just to, to give you a little taste. But yeah, like I said, we will 
we'll be waiting for feedback um, and we really do want to be player led so it will you know plans might change depending on where it is people want uh, as, as Mitch said you know we're gonna we're gonna try and inject variety of content into these into these up updates hopefully you saw recently uh, 5.2 we added a couple of orc and goblin units there's other ideas about weapon variant stuff like that but that's that's the sort of thing that we're aiming for at, at the moment whereas you know characters like uh, Ed Grimm I know people are after him he, he'd be better suited to a DLC in, in the future so yeah please don't expect those in the in the minor up updates so this feedback that you're you're acting on from the community whereabouts are you kind of compiling that from Wh yeah. which channels that we have are you using for that yeah so we've got a, a fantastic player experience team um, here um, like I said they they kind of give us devs like really great feedback um, directly from players so you can go on our official forums our official discord um, and to be honest, most other social media will find it eventually. Um, and yeah, it's, it's maybe not always obvious, but um, like I can promise you we do get all of the feedback from players and it is massively helpful in shaping, you know, not only, I guess, what, what I do in the updates, but just, just everything we do in general. So go there, um, leave all your feedback, it'll reach us um, and then we can, we can act on it. Awesome, yeah, feedback, feedback, feedback. <laughs> we do a lot of reading. I bet. And, and, and I wanted to stress, if there was a faction maybe you were hoping Mitch might have mentioned but didn't, don't worry. We've got a bunch of other you know plans and DLCs and things still to do. So we've got ideas around some of those other factions yeah. as well. They're very much on our radar. Yeah, it's a good point that um, I guess it might not always be obvious kind of how we make the decisions we do in terms of what we do. So obviously we know better than players what our plans are. Mm. Um, so we might know, um, you know, for example, what we might do in future. Um, and that then might mean we do something a little bit different for an update because we know in future this other piece of content people are going to want us to fix or we've already got that on our kind of in our plans. Trust that I guess you know even if you're kind of giving feedback and not seeing it directly action straight away um, it is reaching us and it it's is being seen. It's, it's yeah. being seen it's in the plan somewhere probably. Well, that's all we've got time for today so thanks to Rich, Mitch and Owen oh, and Sean for, <laughs> uh, for joining me again for this today it's been a lot of fun been good chatting with you again do let us know your feedback on this format. We want to keep improving it for you. And don't forget to uh, give us your ideas and suggestions for things you'd like to see reworks on from Mitch and the team. We'll make sure that feedback gets through to the right people. Uh, you can do that on the CA community forums or the Discord server, or of course you can just get us on our Total War uh, social media channels. We hope you're having fun with 5.2, and we're looking forward to giving you more information about patch 5.3 and the next DLC in the near future. So until that time rolls around, we'll say goodbye. <laughs> See ya. Bye. Bye. Well, that's all we've got time for today. So thank you to Rich, Sean and Mitch for joining me for this. It's been a lot of fun. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly. <laughs> You're your own worst enemy. I know. But I can't just help myself. Just, just, just cook you. Yeah. Right. Oh dear. Stop laughing. I'm going to do it on this tape.